My name is Matty, I'm assistant editor at the magazine, and I'm going to share some tips to make the most of your photo trip to the coast. In the UK, you're never more than 70 miles away from the coast, so there's no excuse not to head to the water's edge and capture some images. Here's a few ideas to improve both your field craft, or in this case beach craft, and your imagery. Okay, so our first tip will help you use your tripod. On solid ground, you can simply set up your tripod and start shooting, but on wet sand, the tripod can sink, causing you problems. An affordable solution is to bring along some paper plates. They cost just a few pence, but if you place them under the tripod leg, they will distribute the weight, stopping the tripod from sinking. Our second piece of advice is another tripod tip. Although it's a lovely day, the course can often be a windy place to shoot images. To keep your tripod extra sturdy, try hanging your camera bag from the centre column or even around the legs. This extra ballast will help keep the tripod super sturdy. If you're working near water, it's always worth protecting your kit, especially when there's a risk of waves splashing over your bag. Ziploc freezer bags cost a matter of pence, but they can prove priceless when shielding the lenses and other gear from water. Make sure you cover up your equipment when near the coast. The riskiest time at the coast is when you're changing lenses, as this leaves both the sensor and the lens vulnerable to sand or dirt, getting in where it shouldn't be. If your car's close by, nip back and change lenses there, but if not, try and use your camera bag as a shield from the elements and change lenses as fast as possible. Believe it or not, the internet can help you prepare for a coastal landscape photo shoot. Image sharing sites such as Flickr or 500px can help you find fresh views or angles of well-known locations, but more importantly, the internet will display tide times so you know exactly how high or low the water level will be when you visit. Even if you're standing a fair way back from the shoreline, sea spray can whip up and cover your lens and camera. That's not good. There's little you can do to stop the sea spray, but a smart tip is to keep a microfiber cloth in your kit bag. If it does get covered, simply wipe it down quickly and you'll be sorted. If you have a shot in mind and know exactly what lens is needed, then think twice about taking extra equipment you know you probably won't use. Saving weight is important, as at most coasts you'll have to park up and walk to get to a favourable location. Carrying lighter will enable you to keep shooting for longer. Even the best cameras struggle to cope with the dynamic range of a sunset or a bright day in a coastal scene. The skies are bright, but the foregrounds are darker, and this can lead to unbalanced exposure. ND grads, which are sheets of glass that have one half tinted, help balance the exposure, but they can also be used creatively to extend shutter speeds and introduce more movement into the frame. With the right holder, you can even use multiple filters to achieve both jobs. Image stabilisation systems do a great job of banishing shake when you're using the camera handheld. However, if you place the camera on a tripod, remember to switch this feature off, as the image stabilisation system can actually introduce blur to your frame. A lot of photographers leave as soon as the sun dips below the horizon. And this is a mistake, as some amazing light can occur in the minutes after sunset. Orange hues will turn to pinks and then blues, which can be just as interesting as the golden hour light. So, I'm off to get some fish and chips and I'll return to this amazing location later. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Cheers!